And uh, now it's time to add the slash user view in our Django backend uh, because we need this for our next hours package. Uh, as you uh, see, that it requires this uh, slash user for a bunch of things. Uh, basically, it will do automatically some kind of uh, background things that setting uh, the getting the uh, user data, setting it to the uh, view store, uh, marking our user as logged in, and uh, some other things uh, under the hood. So that's extremely useful to implement this slash user. And uh, I'm going to use the model view set from the view sets of the REST framework. Uh, we need, of course, this uh, user serializer to serialize our uh, data and uh, send back to the uh, as a response. Uh, uh, so we need to register this route in the URL spy and test it quickly. Let's just go ahead and uh, do our code change for our backend. Um, so we have this register and the login, and now we need to um, uh, we need to add some um, getting the user data code. So I'm going to use uh, the model view set, uh, which is uh, going to be imported from the REST framework a uh, view sets as here. And uh, for this uh, current logged in user, so basically we need to add as a query set for this class and this is a user model objects all and uh, we need to add this permission classes because uh, nobody can access our user's data except uh, the logged in user so uh, basically the logged in user gets itself uh, from our backend side and of course we need this serializer class with uh, the name that user serializer and uh, for the model view sets there's a uh, View sets, uh, there's a, a bunch of methods, and we need uh, the retrieve method here. And basically, we uh, need to user, get the user profile from the, uh, the, from the database and pass it to the serializer, and then uh, return as a response, um, uh, as a response with a serialized, uh, serialized data. Uh, the next thing is to add this user serializer to the serializers. And I'm going to add here, so class user serializers, and it should be uh, uh, it should be model serializer as well. And let's just uh, serializer serializers model serializer. And nice. So uh, we can create uh, the user with the um, serializers at. The, uh, that is this, I'm going to add this create method, uh, but uh, uh, most of things that uh, I'm going to add is a class meta and uh, our model for our classes get user model and fields of course uh, the email and uh, email and first name and last name mm, and the password if uh, we want to create uh, through the serializer. Uh, and uh, we can add this uh, extra uh, keyword args as mm, and, uh, as uh, indicating the password as a read only because we don't want to pass back uh, send back the uh, send back the uh, password to the uh, as a serializer object to the user. Um, I think that uh, the seed for our user serializer. Let's just quickly save it. And of course, uh, the views we need to import op, import this user serializer. It should do the trick, uh, I assume. Uh, the remaining thing is just register this current logged in view set in our URLs. So I'm going to add this as a pass and the user. Uh, then of course, this um, current logged in user. Uh, but there is a subtle uh, difference uh, how we should register the uh, view sets uh, as a router. A router. So, it, of course, it's as view, but uh, we need to pass as a dictionary. Like uh, the get method for our uh, view set is a retrieve, the equ equivalent to the retrieve method. And I'm going to add uh, to give a name to this. Um, Route as the current current user, nice. 
let's see if our uh, server still live nice and we can uh, quickly quickly test it um, let's just do slash a user and authentication credentials were not provided so in order to uh, get a current logged in user data we need to be authenticated uh, that means that uh, we need to um, send this access tokens in the header uh, but next house already will do this uh, for us. Let's just go ahead to the front end and uh, refresh the page. We have the slash user endpoint uh, now, and I assume like um, mm -hmm. and uh, we we will be able to log in. So let's just do the trick: the login. And no, uh, no more uh, error on. Um, mm, I would say on on the 404 error because uh, due to our uh, slash uh, user endpoint now it's uh, already with a status 200 OK. So uh, if you go to the uh, what where are the headers? So headers and uh, there's a data. Um, which is passed uh, through the through this request and with the response. I need just quickly see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. So we have sent it and it it's sent back. Uh, it's sent back. So response URL is this one. I, I I don't see the slash users. Um, why we still get mm, API v1 slash user? No, no, we get we get as uh, a user data. So as you see from the mm, uh, from the front end side, that uh, if you uh, preview this set, uh, so we get back our first name, last name, and the email as we uh, did for uh, for our serializer. And the response uh, object is user and the data of the user. So um, basically, we have logged in. Let's see uh, if our house email already in uh, our local storage. So yes, as you see that uh, we did uh, our login, and and let's, where is our phone end? So let's just quickly go to the components and the login. As you see, with, uh, we call the set universal email with a response data email and stored it in the local storage. And of, uh, also, uh, the uh, set user token works well. Uh, it uh, set the user token in the local storage and in the store as well. Uh, I think at this point, it's worth to look at uh, how actually this next house uh, works. And I just quickly want to explore the source code of of the next house package and how uh, to, to see that how actually the set user token and the set universal works and how uh, they uh, were handled uh, under the hood. Uh, so that's it for this video. Uh, we have logged in successfully, but uh, we will explore the stored and the internal mechanisms of this next house package in the next video. See you in the next video.